During the 15th century, the Grand Duchy of Lithuania had found itself to be the biggest state in all of Europe. The consolidation of these lands began in the late 12th century, when the first ruler, Mindogas, was crowned as the Catholic King of Lithuania. Yet the rapid territorial expansion started at the late reign of the Grand Duke Gediminas. His sons Algirdas and Castutas became victorious against the Golden Horde Empire at the Battle of Blue Waters. As a result, Lithuania took over Principality of Kiev and became direct neighbors of Moscow. In 1368, Algirdas, with the support of the Principality of Tver, the chief rival of Dmitry Donskoy, had engaged in a series of raids in the territories around Moscow, later besieging Moscow itself. With the dawn of succeeding rulers, a power struggle ensued. Yogaila, the son of Algirdas, imprisoned Kastutas and his son Vidutas. But in 1392, Vidutas, with the Teutonic aid, managed to sign a treaty in which he recovered all of the former Kastutas lands. Now the established Vitotas the Great continued his grandfather's vision and in 1398 joined forces with the Mongolian armies to conquer and share southern territories north of the Black Sea. Inspired by his successful campaign, Vitotas and Yogaila won support from the Pope for organizing a crusade against the Mongols. The political move also demonstrated that Lithuania had fully accepted Christianity and was defending the religion. The campaign resulted in a crushing defeat at the Battle of Roskla River. Yet still another war followed in 1410 this time against the Teutonic Order, which set off one of the biggest battles in medieval Europe, the most sizable one being the Battle of Grunwald. In 1480, Ivan III considered himself an heir to the fallen Byzantine Empire and defender of the Orthodox Church expanding his territories and in 1480, with the defeat of Akhmat Khan in the Great Stand on the Agru River, ended the supremacy of the Tartar yoke. The Lithuanians felt increasingly pressured by the Russian Empire. Eventually, in 1569, Lithuanians partially accepted Polish demands and entered into alliance with the Union of Lublin, forming the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. In 1577, Ivan IV took advantage of the Commonwealth's internal strife and invaded Livonia, quickly taking almost the entire territory. At the same time, Russian rule expanded towards Siberia. In 1599, Sigismund III, at one time the king of both the Commonwealth and Sweden, lost Sweden to Gustav I. However, the king did not give up on regaining his Swedish throne. From then on, most of his policies would revolve around his attempts to conquer Sweden, even though Commonwealth nobility had little will for such a long and bloody conflict. As the years went by, the united Commonwealth realm started to dwindle as powerful neighboring empires mercilessly claimed their lands.
King Stanislav, the last monarch of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, enacted a series of reforms to enhance Poland's military, societal and political systems. Angered by what was seen as radical republican reforms, Empress Catherine II invaded Poland in 1792, invited by the pro-Russian alliance amongst Polish nobles, who wished to restore the privilege they had lost. Polish patriot Tadeusz took command of the Polish armed forces and declared a nationwide general uprising against Poland's foreign occupiers. The uprising was crushed by November 1794. The three conquering powers signed a treaty to divide the region in 1797, a date which marked the end of Polish-Lithuanian supremacy in Europe 